grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with It is good that we are here. It is good that we come together to worship our God and to hear his word and to receive him into our hearts. It is also good, and I thank Jeff for having acknowledged and all of us for acknowledging the veterans among us who have done so much in protecting our freedoms. As we come together for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to pardon us and to give us His Spirit to guide us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. A reading from the 
book of wisdom, resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her, and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be freed from care. Because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. you 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there's a problem with this parable, and basically the problem is with the wise virgins. Because those poor ones who forgot or didn't bother to bring what was needed. They say to them, give us some of your oil. 
And the wise virgins say, no, we're not giving you anything. We're going to keep it for ourselves. Pretty selfish, isn't it? I've always wondered about that part until I thought about it. And I realized that Jesus is not talking about oil. If he were, then, you know, that would have been a lame excuse on the part of the wise virgins. There's not enough for both of us. But Jesus is not talking about oil. He's talking about spiritual goods. And so, for example, if someone were to say to another person, give me some of your faith. In other words, that you believe, so make it that I believe as well. Well, that simply wouldn't work. We cannot transfer my belief to someone else or your belief to me. It's something that each person must do themselves. It can't be shared, it can't be given, and it can't be forced on somebody else. Now, we know situations that remind us of this. For example, many people, when their children grow up, they lose the faith and they stop going to church and they stop practicing their Catholicism. And the parents will sometimes say, did I do something wrong? Well, the fact is you didn't. As long as you raised them in the faith, you didn't do anything wrong. But you can't give what's inside of you and make it the inside of them. You can teach them, you can inspire them, but you can't make them believe. Now, hopefully what's going to happen is that later on in life, they're going to remember the teaching, they're going to remember the inspiration, and they're going to come back to the faith because of their own belief. Because they got oil themselves, not because somebody else gave it to them or forced it on them. You can't transfer your own faith to make somebody else believe. Give us some of your vocation. Give us some of your calling. This past week was National Vocations Awareness Week, and especially for vocations to the priesthood and to the religious life. Well, a person may have that calling, but it can't be forced on anyone. It has to come from the heart. It has to come from one's own oil, one's own flame that is in the heart that says, I believe God is calling me. Now, it is very important to watch out for that oil and watch out for that flame because it also can be forgotten and go out and not be brought back up until it's too late. I like to look at our young people, our young boys, our young girls, our young men, our young women. You may have a vocation, boys to the priesthood, boys and girls to the religious life. Think about it. Ask God, am I called to this? Because that's something that we so seriously need, but it has to come from inside. It can't be because Father Frank wants you to become a priest that you're going to be a priest. It just doesn't work that way. But some of you may be called, and some may be called to the religious life. One finds one's own oil, one's own vocation. Give me some of your reward. Now this goes straight to the heart of the parable, because the parable is talking about getting into that wedding feast, talking about the day and the hour that we're called to meet our Lord and hopefully be with him forever. So, you have done well. You have done something very good. So I'm gonna take your reward and I'm gonna give it to Phyllis. Is that logical? No, nope, not logical at all. She's the first one to say it's not logical. You can't transfer the award of heaven. It's not like we're being selfish and saying I don't wanna give it to you. Of course we desire that every person be there with us in heaven. But we can't make it happen for somebody else. It has to come from them. Remember the parable of Lazarus and the rich man? Remember that he wanted the rich, the rich man wanted Lazarus to touch his tongue with a little bit of water to relieve him from the punishment. But Lazarus says there's a great chasm between us and I can't come across and you can't come this way. If somebody, God forbid, has made it into hell, that's their own doing, and there's no way we can give them, quote unquote, the oil of salvation and get them out. It's one's own doing. And one has to have one's own oil. So you see, Jesus isn't talking about some physical thing that we actually can share. 
He's talking about spiritual realities that have to come from within the person. There's one more example I'm going to use, and that is, give us some of your courage. Once again, we're talking that bravery, that courage, is something that cannot be given one to the other and poured into their hearts. You remember the cowardly lion wanted to have somebody pour courage into him. Basically, he was courageous during the whole story because he was afraid, but he did what was needed, and that's courage. But it came from within. The wizard couldn't give it to him. It came from the heart of the lion himself. Some of you, no doubt, have heard the story of Alvin York. Alvin York was a Tennessee boy, a great marksman, good with a gun, a bit dissolute, but he had a conversion as a young man and became a very strong religious person. And not long after that, he was called up for military duty. But his newfound religion said that he should not carry a gun. Well, he tried to not be able to carry a gun. He tried to follow that and had all kinds of difficulty. This is in the time of World War I, and conscientious objectors were not as well understood in those days or as well accepted. So he had a lot of problems with this and struggling with the recruiters and with the army leaders. And so finally he went to be alone and to think about this problem, and he brought it to prayer, and he remembered something that Jesus had said. It's something that we heard recently in the gospel. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God's. And he thought about it and he said, Caesar, the country, needs my service and needs my talent as a marksman and needs me to be willing to fight. Now, that's something I have to give, even though I have a distaste for hurting people. Well, who doesn't have a distaste for hurting people? Nobody wants to go out and shoot. Nobody wants to go out and kill. But he says, Caesar needs this service. So he went back to the army, took up his rifle, and he became one of the most decorated soldiers in World War I. And this was basically because at one point, he went and single-handedly almost conquered, defeated a German machine gun nest. That's something I'm not used to talking about, machine gun nests. But he defeated one practically on his own and brought in many prisoners and saved many other soldiers. For this, he received great honors and medals and was very well known when he came back from the war back to the United States. So, he was not extremely happy that he had to do this. He said that he didn't want endorsements, he didn't want to be famous, he just did it to save his men. And that was kind of an attitude that he wanted to be courageous enough to do what was helpful to his fellow soldiers and to do what was helpful to others in his country, to save the freedoms of the United States. Very strong story of courage. And there are many stories of courage of those who are in the armed services. Stories of people who have gone into the worst of harm's way in order to de defend what is right and good. Stories of those who suffered from Agent Orange in Vietnam. Stories of those who lost limbs in Afghanistan or in Iraq. Those who suffer from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Those who have made many other sacrifices and have many other sufferings because they love this nation and because they have courage. Something no one could give them but that oil of courage that they had within. This is Veterans Day. It comes from the armistice of World War I. In fact, this is the actual day, even though we celebrated it yesterday, because at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, the armistice was signed with Germany. So, this is the beginning armistice day of what eventually became our Veterans Day. And it is something where we remember all those who have served in the armed forces. I'm going to take a page from Father Kenny's technology here. <laughs> there is a very nice sign, a very beautiful sign at Sterling Court next to the pictures of the servicemen and women. And I liked it so much I took a picture of it. And I'd like to share it with you today on this Veterans Day. It is the veteran, not the preacher, 
who has given us freedom of religion. It is the veteran, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It is the veteran, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It is the veteran, not the campus organizer, who has given us freedom to assemble. It is the veteran, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to a fair trial. It is the veteran, not the politician, who has given us the right to vote. It is the veteran who salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, whose coffin is draped in the flag. Many thanks to our veterans and those who have served. We honor you this day because you have been brave and you have been generous and you have defended and kept safe our nation and its freedoms. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, we come to you today with hope in your promises. Hear the prayers that we bring to you this day. To Pope, to Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and all who teach the faith, that by word and example they may lead others to a deeper relationship with Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For national leaders, may they turn to God for guidance, to enact just laws and policies which serve the good of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick, the oppressed, the homebound, the elderly, that they may be cared for with loving compassion and may experience God's love through their caretakers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our community of faith and our greater local community, that we may respond generously to the call of discipleship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our catechumens and candidates, they, may they be inspired by the heroic virtue of the saints and see in them the power and authentic holiness that God's grace offers to each human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those serving in the military, may they be protected from harm and return home safely. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, may they come to enjoy perfect happiness and peace in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Elizabeth and Frank Garella, Garella, uh, and a special intention for Zosia Veskowska, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Father, we ask that you hear and answer these prayers and all those that we hold in the silence of our hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gift bearers to Mary are Phyllis and Bob Diaz-Tino, in memory of Phyllis' parents, Elizabeth and Friend, girl, girl. Our uh, second collection.
collection today is their capital maintenance and priest retirement. and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your needs, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all of the churches. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and all your faithful people. Remember your servants, Elizabeth and Frank Grella, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they, who are united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. I leave you. My peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. But a share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please turn to the inside back cover of your hymnal and we pray together the prayer on Him Christi. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, conceal me. Do not permit me to be parted from you. From the evil foe, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come to you to praise you with all your saints forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Father Kenny is up in the air. I mean literally. He's in a plane on his way back from Texas from the meeting of all the U.S. Filipino priests. So we wish him a safe flight and we'll be seeing him back shortly. Ask you to please join me and my brother Joe for our annual Brothers concert. That will be tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock here in the church. Please support our CCW Craft and Plant Fair this weekend. Visit them after all the Masses. And there's some wonderful things there. I always get Christmas presents there. It's a good start for Christmas shopping. Join us next Saturday, November 18th, as we celebrate a Mass for people with disabilities at the 4 p.m. Saturday Vigil Mass. Our Lady of Divine Providence Procession, Rosary, Mass, and Reception Sunday, November 19th at 1.30, and this is principally in Spanish, so that you know. The procession will start at 2 by the blessings. 
CCW is accepting applications for those needing help with Christmas presents for children ages infant to 14 years of age. Applications can be picked up in the parish office, Little Blessings, or St. Vincent de Paul. Deadline for applications is November 20th. Dolly will be outside selling cat gear, which is a fundraiser for the youth group, and a very good way to proclaim the faith when you're in casual clothes. It's got Catholic sayings on the t-shirts and hoodies and other clothes. So Dolly will be outside selling this after Mass. There will be a lector's meeting, all lectors of the parish, next Saturday, November 18th at 10 a.m. here in the church. And you'll be able to get your lector's workbooks then as well. Some people have been asking. I think that's all the announcements. Anything else anybody can think of? Ah, yes. Paige is good. She keeps me in line. Thank you, Paige. The Vocations Crucifix this week is going to Anna Chavari. Anna will be praying for vocations to the priesthood, to the religious life, to the permanent diaconate, to matrimony, and to the lay ministries. And we ask that you will also pray for Francisco, our seminary, and Dominic and Hector, our deacon candidates. And may your prayers bring much fruit to the church. Thank you. Please stand for the final blessing. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.